Hey, what's up, everybody? Adobe Masters here, and today I'm be showing you how to use Adobe Premiere Rush. So Premiere Pro is a great piece of software. It has a lot of different features, a lot of different ways that you can go, and it sort of is the hub of the Adobe creative process. You can edit audio in there, you can send it to After Effects, you can do all these amazing things. However, Premiere Pro is a little bit on the sort of high end of that learning curve. There's a lot of different things you have to learn, and if you're just trying to edit like a vlog or something, it can get a little bit cumbersome, and that is where Premiere Rush comes into play. Adobe developed a sort of a quicker editing platform for just creating content. It's sort of more of a singular uh, timeline editing software. Think of like iMovie or Windows Movie Maker. And this is sort of Premiere's or Adobe's version of this. What's great about this is that the sort of the interface is the same on the computer as it is an iPad, as it is a phone. Of course, when you get to the phones and stuff, those always get a little bit tricky just because you don't have your mouse and your keyboard next to you. But you can use the same interface across all three devices. And like I said, it allows you to create media quickly. And for today's world where there's vlogs and there are different things, this can be really helpful. So that is what we're going to be going over today. We're going to be going over Premiere Rush. So let's get started. Let's jump into this and let's sort of look at what this is. So if you'll see right here, there is a tutorial when you first download and install it from the Creative Cloud right here. Um, it's Premiere Rush. You see it's got the RU here. It does have a tutorial, so I would definitely follow that. It shows you a couple of the, the basics to get started. What you can do when you start up is you have this right here, which is all of your projects. You just click on one and it's gonna go ahead and throw you right into the project to begin editing. To go back, go ahead and click that home button and you'll be presented with this view once again where all of your projects are listed. Let's go ahead and create ourselves a new project. And you'll see that it has this default sort of uh, footage right here. I want you to select media before you actually create the project, which can be helpful. So let's, let's name this um, test project two right here. And then now we can actually go look for our other media. So if we just change it up, we can look in here or we can just select these right here, which I'll do uh, like so. So if you select them, you'll see it says one, two, three, four, five. And what it's doing is actually going to put these in the timeline like so. So if you have a certain order, let's say, you know, we wanted to do uh, boarding the boat, then boat cruising and then boat view. That sounds like a pretty good sort of transition and maybe even water aerial at the end here. Once we hit the create button, it's gonna go ahead and prepare the media, and then it's going to throw it all into the timeline right here. And preparing media actually, I think it encodes it. I don't know, I'd have to like read into the documentation of how it works, but I think it encodes it to make it play back quicker. Down here, you can see that we have the timeline, and like I said, it's very streamlined. There's no of those side panels or anything. It's just the timeline right here, and we can open up panels when we need them. If we click that space bar, or we hit play or pause, what it's gonna do is it's going to do just that, it's going to play the clip right here. So you can see that we are going right through the clip and just like a, a normal editing software, we have that timeline going. Now to begin the, the sort of creative process here, if we want to trim down a clip, all we have to do is click on it. You can see that I can go in or out right like so. And if we wanna cut a clip, then we can click on it and then go over here to the scissors tools and actually hit control K. Now, I don't really like Control K because it's pretty far on the keyboard. I like to keep everything where my left hand is near the uh, QWE keys. However, that's sort of where you start getting into the, the, the downsides of Premiere Rush is that if we go up to edit and then into preferences, there's not really an area where we can sort of change that around. It has very small amount of preferences or customization. Kind of have to lose that to create the fast editing process. So anyway, you can always just click this button over here to create a cut. Uh, so if we hit a cut, you'll see that it cuts it right down the center, right like so. We can do that wherever we want. Uh, click, create a cut. And then if we click and drag, we move it around on the timeline. You'll notice that down here, we have this sort of hidden uh, bar on the very bottom, and that's the audio. A lot of times people don't really care about what the audio looks like, but if you're like me, I like to see the audio. And to do that, all you have to do is this button right here, which says expand audio. Click it, and now you have the audio all expanded on the bottom, so you can kind of see if there's any peaks or anything like that. Let's say we wanted to add some more footage in here. Well, we can go up here, we can click, and we can hit add media, and that's going to open up the media sort of browser right here, where we can look around to find different media, or you can actually click this button, the little bin right here, and you can go ahead and sort of drag them in like you would any other thing. So for example, if we go up here, we just find this footage. Let's say we wanna drag in this one and this one, holding the control key here so I can select two. 
I hit copy on over and it's going to freeze a little bit while it does it, but there's no like, uh, Premiere kind of has like a loading thing, or Premiere Pro, but this, it's okay. You drag it in and it does work. So what it does is it actually selects a one and a two right here. Uh, it has you ready to just sort of drag it over. So once you have the one and two, all you have to do is click the add button and it's gonna go ahead and throw those right in wherever your cursor is. And in this situation, it's at this point right here and it throws those, uh, those clips into this and it's ready to go. If you'll notice, it is a little bit sort of blurry and fuzzy here. That's because if we go up to view here, we can actually control the, um, the, the playback right down here at the bottom with preview quality. We can change that to high if we want, and it's going to actually update this and make it just a little bit sharper, but uh, that's gonna come at the cost of higher processing power. Anyway, so now we have this sort of timeline going. Next thing we can do is we can actually drag these any of these clips over and add them normally. So if we wanted to drag them over like in Premiere Pro, we can do that. And if we wanna create ourselves another sort of track here, we can do that as well. I don't think there's a limit on the amount of tracks that you can create. Actually, it does look like there is a limit right here, about four different tracks. And that, this is what sort of makes it more of a timeline, uh, a single timeline editor or a, a single track editor is because you can add a, like one or two tracks, but you're gonna start running out of space pretty quickly. It's gonna try to preserve the sort of look over that the amount of tracks. That's what Premiere Pro is for. Anyway, we've got this, uh, the, this clip going. And now we can add a couple of different things in here as well. We can add a voiceover. So if we click the add voiceover button, it's going to actually open up different audio tracks on the bottom here. And we can actually just record and just start talking and it will actually record the voice in there. And this actually works on a, uh, a sort of timer. So if we click here, we click play and then we, or my bad, we have to actually click this button. And it's gonna go back three seconds and get you ready to where you had it. And then now I'm talking and it is recording my audio right into here. And you'll see that it's had, it has created this voiceover and it's actually edited it for a voice. So it sort of boosts up those the bass and the mid-tones there and it gets you a nice voice right there. Anyway, now we can go ahead and remove this and go back to our normal timeline here. Uh, you can see that we can control the tracks. We can actually get into the different track layers when we click this button. And you'll see we do actually have three tracks on the top and three tracks on the bottom. And I don't believe we can add additional tracks from here. Um, let's just see if there's anything in preferences. No, okay, so this is what you're sort of limited to working with. Next step, next step is actually editing a clip inside here. So if we click on one of these clips, we can go over to the right side here and we have the text tool, we have the transitions, um, we have the color, so let, let's just kind of go down these. We have the text or the titles right here, which is actually templates. Easiest way to add one of these is to just hit the plus button, hit title, and you'll actually add a whole title layer here. And then you can sort of select any of these templates that you want. And it comes with a lot of different templates to work with to start off with, or you can go to Adobe Stock and then purchase more. Sort of what this program kind of feels like it's aiming towards is kind of pushing more people towards that Adobe Stock area. But let's say that we wanted to use this one right here the main title. So now we can actually just go up here and if you double click on any of the text, you can change it. So uh, boat ride, maybe it's in the Bahamas. And so now we have this sort of transition in and you'll actually notice that it has the animation with it as well. Again, it makes that editing process really, really quick because once you have the templates, you drop in, you add the text and you're good to go. If we wanna edit the actual clip areas, we have this thing right here, transitions. So if we click on a clip and we double click one of these, let's say like dip to black, it's gonna add it to each of the ends here. So we click play now and you'll see that what we have is it dips to black right there and it dips to black right there. If we go ahead and hit the cross dissolve, it's gonna do cross dissolve right there and same on the other side. And if we actually click on one of the clips and hit control A, so it's going to select all of the clips when you hit control A. What you can do is you can actually go in here, you can choose one and like, let's say we wanna to dip to black. And what it's gonna do is it's going to add that dip to black to every single clip in here. And this is really great because this is a very, very fast way to just add quick transitions throughout your entire clip right here. So, or the, your entire sequence. So now you have the dip to black to everything. So you can make it as long as you want, just control A, click on one of these, you're good to go. Next area is color, and we have the ability to add different colors around here. So like, let's say we selected this one, we can go ahead and hit that film look or the, the bleach look or Kodak or really anything that you want. That one's pretty intense. Let's go with the bleach. 
You can also set the intensity on here. So if you wanna you know, make it really strong or just, just a little bit bleached out like so, you can do that. And then you can go into the edit and just sort of fine tune it here. You can change the exposure, contrast, highlights, temperature, uh, faded. The vignette is important down here because a lot of people like to add maybe a little vignette to focus you on the center, especially if it's a really bright shot or maybe even a reverse vignette to give it sort of that dreamy look. And yeah, just a, a really quick way to add a vignette in there as well and a quick way to edit colors and create your own presets and things like that. Next area is the audio. Audio is actually a pretty neat section. So you have the clip volume right here. If you'll notice whenever I increase this, it raises everything up. Whenever I decrease this, it lowers everything down. Uh, going back to the default right here, you can see that this arrow will reset you back there really quickly. You can sort of just manipulate this and get that looking good. Remember that if it's like this, you can click that expand audio button to see it. In the advanced, we can actually choose the type of audio here. So if we have music or voice, we can choose one of those settings and it's actually going to sort of do this auto adjust to the frequencies in that audio clip to just give it a little bit more of a kick or make it feel a little bit better. Especially with music and voice, you kind of want them in different audio realms and it'll do that for you. Realms being like the frequencies so they fit together instead of attack each other. And then on here, we just have the channels. We have a view of the different channels. You'll see that the right was capturing a little bit different than the left. And you can actually mute any of the channels if you want by quickly clicking on them. Finally, what we have over here is the transform tab. The transform tab allows you to just do some basic positioning on anything. Uh, within here, your, this can be the, the graphics layers like those titles or all just on clips. And you'll notice that we have the, the ability to like vertically position or rotate or add in width and subtract width things like that. Now, there isn't any keyframes in this program, so you can't actually create the animations uh, in this program, but I believe, because we did see animations in that other area, that you can create animations and things in Premiere Pro and then actually export them as those templates, so those title templates over here, and then import them into Premiere Rush. So if you're a little bit more tech savvy and you know how to use Premiere Pro and export as a motion graphics template, you can bring it in and create those little animations yourself. Finally, down here we have the advanced, which is just using the crop here. This is actually a really good thing to add like some black bars here. So if we wanted to go like maybe like 10% on each one of these, we can click these numbers here and you can create that sort of cinematic look right down the center like so. And then opacity is if you wanna like add them on top of each other or something. Um, might be good for a title or if you have like an overlay that you wanna put on a clip, you can do that as well. And then finally, let's cover exporting. So exporting is actually pretty neat in here. Exporting gives you the ability to just take your sequence and just export it without a lot of the, the hassle that Premiere Pro has. Premiere, again, it gives you a lot of options, but options can be a little bit complicated and stressful. Here, you kind of have a very quick way. You can export it local, which is a .mp4, just the video file itself. Uh, you just go down to the advanced settings. It's going to do automatic, which I think it just chooses whatever the resolution was. But if you're uploading to like Facebook or YouTube, you can actually choose one of those presets. So like, you let's go YouTube 1080p. It'll go ahead and set that up for you. Now, if you want to actually just upload to YouTube directly, this is really, really simple to do. It'll choose the, the YouTube template for you, of course. And then all you have to do is click the sign in button. It's going to bring up the authorize the application right here. And you just sign in with Google and choose your YouTube account and you can actually just upload directly right from here. Really, really neat sort of functionality. Uh, this is actually in Premiere Pro. I have a tutorial on that if you wanna check that out. But here it's set up a lot better. And you can upload to Facebook, Instagram, and Behance all like that. Once you are ready, you just click that export button. It'll begin rendering your sequence out and then you are ready to go. But that is basically it on Premiere Rush. Like I said, this is a, a very watered down, a very distilled version of Premiere Pro. But if you're not doing a lot in Premiere Pro, if the, all those panels are just getting in your way and all you wanna do is just throw some clips together, throw some transitions in there, do a little audio editing, a little color adjustment, and you're good to go, then I think Rush is definitely what you wanna check out because you can get really, really quick editing in here. Thanks everyone for joining me. If you have any questions or comments, go ahead and throw them in the comment section below on our website at adobemasters.net. If you want to see more videos similar to this one, go ahead and that subscribe button. I make a video every other day on Adobe-related products. And until next time, guys, see ya.